Hey, come on, guys. Push to the right. Push to the right. Spread out. Let's go. They're up on the burrow. See the white hat? Hey, let's get some tag in through this hole right here. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm gonna to be going over my experience at Milsim West Aerodrome Babaslava, along with going over the kit that I brought out there. But before we do, it's time to acknowledge the sponsor of today's video. What's up guys? Nick from the future to tell you that today's video is sponsored by Sightmark. And I know what you guys are saying. Nick, isn't Sightmark a cheap optic? Yes, some would say affordable, but it's also the optic our boy used to do the Lord's work, so I think that's pretty cool. Go check them out, links in the description, and big thank you to them for supporting this channel. But with that out of the way, guys, let's get into this video. So Milsim West Aerodrome Babaslava was held at the Griffin Group Training Center right outside of Fort Bragg. Uh, it was kind of cool going back to Fort Bragg because I spent a lot of time there when I was in the military for different training things. But you know, I've never been to the Griffin Group Training Center. And I'll be honest, guys, this has been my favorite AO I've been to so far since doing this whole Milsim West thing. Um, had a ton of variety. I even liked it more than Guardian Center, which you know is a ton of fun. It's all urban, so it's all CQB, very well suited for airsoft but I really enjoyed just the variety that Griffin Group had because you know, not only had an, a giant airfield complete with an airplane that you can get into and clear out. Oh, shit. It also had a bunch of like fortified fighting positions along that airfield along with woods, swamps, uh, different kind of you know, CQB areas along with a gigantic like factory that we had to clear out towards the end, which Russ 4 held. And this is the first time, you know, Milson West has been to this AO. And overall, I think it went very well. I, this is my first time going as NATO cadre. The other times I've been Russ 4, which I do love going Russ 4. So, you know, it's a little bit different for me this time going NATO. So of course, since I went NATO, I had to wear NATO kit and use a NATO gun. So I wore my old cries, uh, used the Mark 18, like this one you see here. And, you know, I got a different perspective of what the different factions are like. And I had an absolute blast. NATO was supposed to be on the defensive the entire kind of game. Rus4 outnumbered us by like 80 guys. So their task for this uh, event was to conduct essentially an airfield seizure where we were kind of entrenched in different fighting positions along the airfield the first night. Rus4 was supposed to get dropped in. Uh, it was supposed to be like them getting dropped off in helicopters, even though know, it was buses. They're not that high speed yet, guys but they were supposed to drop in, clear us off the airfield, and we were expected to die like the first few hours of the night. And that didn't really end up happening. I think we ended up, uh, we ended up holding out in that same fighting position until well into the next day, until we essentially we had to get admin moved off of that section of the AO into a different area in preparation for the last day. But I think both sides put up a really good fight, especially that first night. I think this was supposed to, uh, I think I heard Josh say that it was the most violent night in Milsim West uh, history, at least for the first night, because both of us, or both NATO and Rus4, ended up burning through a ton of their ammo in the very first night. I think Rus4 was dipping into like their second resupply worth of ammo in the very first night. That's how, my, how much action there was on this AO. And, it kind of ended up happening. I think one of the downsides to this event was, you know, the lack of ammo. Uh, there was kind of a uh, miscalculation of how much ammo was supposed to be needed because that's how Milsom West, how the action is kind of controlled, is ammo supply. You're not allowed to bring in any of your own ammo. It's all done through resupplies and your initial supply when you go in. And <laughs> towards the end of the, the game, we were like scrounging for BBs where each player had like, you know, a couple mags on them, if that. 
But other than that, I think the event went very well. You know, had a ton of good, um, you know, action when it comes to, you know, throughout the entire event. I don't feel like there was really any time where it was truly stale, where it's like, what are we doing? Um, where some events do, like some certain AOs, you know, don't want, lend themselves as well as, you know, places like, you know, Griffin Group or Guardian Center does to Airsoft, where we're all kind of spread out and nobody knows what they're doing. Overall, guys, uh, it was a great time out there. And, you know, I hope that, you know, there's future events held there that utilizes more aspects to that facility because there's a, still a ton to that facility that were not utilized. There's even a river that kind of like goes between both sections of the AO. So I could see one day maybe, I don't know, like, using zodiacs or something like that to traverse the ao and go behind like enemy lines you know maybe it won't happen but i think that would be something really cool to utilize there because the river is big enough and i was talking to people who run the facility and they do it all the time so you know maybe next time not maybe ask for permission first but i think boats would be a really sick idea to utilize there How about new, you crazy Dutch bastard? As far as the kit that I brought out there, uh, kind of going with the NATO theme, had to use NATO guns, wasn't allowed to use my AKs. So I ended up using my old Classic Army Mark 18. So this is actually one of the first airsoft guns I've ever owned. And I would argue it's probably yeah, it's the first good airsoft gun I've ever owned. I got this thing back in 2009. So this thing has some years on it. I used this a lot when I was first started playing like Milsim games. You know, been to a bunch of different bigger Milsim ops with this thing. It didn't look like this back then. It came with like the standard, um, you know, it looked like a Mark 18 motto. But use it a ton uh, before I went into the military. And when I went to the office of the military, kind of put this thing in storage at my dad's house. When I mean storage, it was sitting in my dad's shed, um, you know, non temperature control at all for about seven years. And when I got out and I started playing airsoft again, started doing this whole YouTube thing, I called up my dad and I asked him, I was like, hey, do you have any of those old airsoft guns I, I was using before? And he said, yeah. And I was like, can you ship them to me? So he shipped me this gun and it was in very bad shape when i got it you know external things were broken on it like the buffer tube was completely bent the front sight post that was on it was cracked the internals were a complete mess i spent a ton of money trying to resurrect this gun because i really wanted to get that nostalgia factor of using like my original airsoft gun for my advent, uh, airsoft adventures these days so <laughs> i about just given up on it because i was sending it off to different places to try to get it fixed and put like new parts on this really old gun and it kept on i felt like it kept on coming back more and more broken so i essentially had given up on it until i, <clears throat> I met a local tech here who you know, he did some work on some other guns of mine. I was like, hey, would you mind taking a crack at trying to resurrect this old gun? And he said, sure. And sure enough, he completely reworked this thing, put a bunch of new internals on it. So essentially we got over a 10 year old gun with a bunch of like 2022 internals on it. Got a Titan Gate MOSFET in here, which essentially makes the trigger pull on it more responsive, less like an airsoft gun. and. He also kind of did some stuff with the hop up where, you know, it's able to hop BBs, fairly heavy ones as well. And this is probably one of the better airsoft guns that I own, even now it is, you know, way older than anything I have right now. As far as the uh, external things I have going on here, towards the tip here, I have a Streamlight ProTac running on a pressure switch, which I don't think I'm gonna do in the future. I'm pretty against using pressure switches when it comes to white lights nowadays, mainly because of how risky it is to ND this thing. Or when I mean ND, it's like to accidentally discharge your white light and give yourself and the rest of your squad mates away, which is a huge <clears throat> liability because, you know, when you're sneaking through the woods, you don't wanna 
there's nothing more embarrassing than being in a stack of guys and then this thing accidentally bumping up against a piece of your kit or the sling kind of wraps around it in a weird way, sets it off in the pitch black and everyone turns around, looks at you and says, turn off your fucking white light. Even if it was a mistake, every, you know the mistake you made, but everybody has to tell it to you. So I think in the future, I'm gonna take this pressure switch off, move this white light to the left side and just use the thumb cap on it to, um, you know, activate it with my thumb. That way, if it accidentally gets bumped up against something, it's not gonna send a bunch of white light out and showcasing all my guys. Moving back here, as far as the optic I have on here, I have this Primary Arms SLX 3 by scope on, uh, prism scope on here. Just got this thing, I actually got this thing for my AK, but I really wanted to try it out you know, at a, in a kind of like a combatives environment. So um, put it, slapped it right on top of this Mark 18, it kind of looks a little bit goofy, but I really wanted the magnification to help me out with target ID. That way I have something that not necessarily to take like sniper shots with, but just so I can ID guys from a further distance away. And I think the coolest thing about this setup, honestly, is this piggybacked uh, red dot sight I have in here. This is from US Optics. It's a little pistol sight mounts to the right to the top here. And what I've been using, what I was using this for was passive aiming through my night vision. So this makes it very easy to aim um, your red dot while in your night vision because you don't have to climb your head down here and try to get behind a red dot. You just kind of float your head up here just like you would almost like a carry handle mounted optic. And this setup right here works very well for passive aiming with night vision. Uh, another thing I'm going to change about this in the future is I need an illuminator, which I do have now, but wasn't using one out there. An illuminator matched with this kind of optic setup would be, I think, do very well when it comes to, you know, night vision shooting. Another gun that I brought out there, guys, was this Glock 17 by Umarex. This is an excellent airsoft, like, Glock replica. It shoots really far. It's pretty reliable. And... I'll be honest guys, I didn't really end up wearing this while I was out there. I mostly stowed it inside of my ruck. And the reason I bring these out here, or out to Milson West Games, is as a backup in case this gun goes down. Because airsoft guns, I don't, I don't know what it is about them, they just love to die. You know, like they're not like real guns where you can diagnose a problem like super fast. These things are mostly, you know, electronics. And when you mix electronics in a field environment, things just go wrong. And, you know, I like to have this out there. It's a very small thing. Just in case this goes down, I don't have to like leave or not have a gun on me for the entire weekend because. One of the rules at Milsim West, which differentiates it from other Milsim games, is the fact that you cannot return to your vehicle once we step off Friday night. And that's to, uh, for the immersion factor, which is you know what helps separate itself, because if people were constantly going back to their vehicles, it would just be a big parking lot party. And also, it's a safety thing, because if you chrono with a certain gun like this, where it's shooting you know around th uh, 360 with .25s, um, it passed the chrono test, but if you know this gun went down and I just allowed everybody to go back to their vehicle and grab another gun that maybe didn't pass chrono, and then someone gets jacked up because of it, it's on the cadres. You know, it's on the cadre who let that happen. And unfortunately, I had an instance where three of my players—they're all on the same team, they're all free buddies—all of their guns went down at the same time, and. <laughs> Unfortunately, they had to, you know, go home because, oh, they chose to leave, but, you know, there was other positions that they could have done out there, like be a medic. Even if you don't, if, even if your gun goes down, there's still things for you to do out there. And unfortunately, they left because their guns went down. And I think it's a thing that needs to be put out there. You know, when you go out to these events, you want to bring out there the most reliable airsoft gun that you can because you know if this goes down you're kind of shit out of luck so that's why i always bring a pistol and you know just in case this thing goes down i have a backup to utilize you know um, mostly i just wore a riggers belt but i had this stowed in my ruck just in case this thing went down as far as the kit that i was wearing out there guys starting from head to toe was using my team wendy x fill bump helmet been using this thing for a long time and during the day i was using this with my gopro i have a little gopro mount here from brain exploder that i use but during night i was using this for my night vision so i have a 
uh, night vision ink PBS 14. Uh, White Foss finally got some night vision because <sighs> working these events every month made me realize how important it is to have night vision. Airsoft has changed, guys. Um, <laughs> Almost everybody out there is using nods of some sort. A lot of guys using dual tubes. Um, I chose to just go with a PBS-14 with white phosphorus because, you know, it works very well. I, back when I was in the military, I always said I would never use PBS-14s because all the ones I used while I was there were garbage. I can't see fucking shit out of this thing. And I kind of got spoiled when it came to dual tubes, but I was actually able to borrow uh, my buddy m57 firing device uh, he had a white phosphorus pbs 14 that i use at guardian center and i was using that thing i was like man i could actually work with this so i decided to get one for myself this one again is from night vision inc and i was using this to essentially passive aim through that red dot on that mark 18 the entire weekend and it worked out very well as far as the kit that i brought out there <laughs> i use this same style of kit when I was on Rust Ford. So this is an ANA tactical alpha rig. This isn't technically like a NATO rig, but it's in multi-cam. And honestly, guys, I think this is a, <laughs> this is like the meta rig when it comes to Milsom West, because per the tax op, you can wear this on either faction. It's an excellent chest rig because you can hold, I think you can hold uh, what, one, two, three, four. So you can hold eight mags in this thing. Um, I chose to run six mags in these three cells right here, and then just have my Baofeng radio in this last cell right here. And this is pretty much my favorite chest rig that I use these days. This is, you know, it's kind of large, but another cool thing about it was it truly makes it a meta rig is that you can run body armor inside of this thing. So this bib actually comes up and you can run a plate inside of this thing. And if you buy the back panel for this thing, you can run a plate in the back. So if you wanted to utilize the armor rules at Milsom West, so if you're running full plates in a, in a ballistic helmet, you get two Milsom West tourniquets, you can with this rig. And you can run it on Rust 4, ma mainly on Rust 4, but you can also ru run it on NATO because it's in multicam. So ran this the entire time, absolutely love this rig. Uh, Great Shop did send me this thing, but I do have another one that's an ATAX FG, which I did by myself. Um, I just like these things so much that, you know, Great Shop was happy to send me one in multicam. As far as the assault pack I was using out there, I was using this Eagle Industries uh, beaver tail. I think it's called the Yote now. I think this is an older version. I've always heard of these referred to as beaver tails. Um, excellent little assault pack inside of here. I had about three liters of water uh, on a, in a camelback. And inside of here, I would also store my nods and, you know, some various other miscellaneous stuff like a poncho or not a poncho, but like a, you know, rain jacket and things like that. Moving on to the main piece of sustainment gear that I brought out there. I never really went before, went over it before on the channel. This is my modified Alice pack. I have been using this Alice pack since, you know, I was in the military, have used it in a ton of different training things there, have deployed with this thing twice. And I had this, you can't buy it in this like, you know, you can buy things that are very similar to this. I know uh, Tactical Tailor, I actually have a bunch of Tactical Tailor things on this uh, rucksack, but I had this thing sewn uh, at a shop outside of Fort Bragg. And the guy out in the shop, um, I think it was run out of a place called General Jackson's. Uh, he, his specialty was modifying Alice packs. So this is the Alice pack that I use at every Milsom West event, and it works out very well. Have a ton of pouches on here, have a sleeping bag pouch shown to the bottom here, which I didn't end up using at this time. I just kind of put it in the main compartment here. And yeah, inside this thing, just lived out of this, um, had all my food in here, had my sleep system, change of clothes, extra water. So I have an extra Camelback inside of here. Um, another thing, you know, a lot of people miss when they go out to Milsom West is how much water do they bring? I bring a ton of water. I bring two full three liter uh, Camelbacks along with a Nalgene, which I usually do all my uh, water resupplies just with a Nalgene bottle because I always tend to have enough water. I guess maybe if it was a hotter event, I would have to fill up these Camelbacks. But so far to every single one I've been to, um, I never completely ran out of water. So it's been working out for me so far. And yeah, 
Um, highly recommend getting a good you know, rucksack of some sort when you go out to these Milsom West games because I see a lot of guys kind of show up with you know, some janky things or they buy the right thing and it's completely set up wrong or they have, you know, things hanging off of it that don't make sense and they end up paying for because the ruck kills them. But yeah, I highly recommend doing some research on how to pack a ruck. I think Grantham has a good video on it or maybe I'll do a video on it someday because, you know, I've lived out of a rucksack for, you know, many moons in my time. And I don't know, it's kind of cool kind of going back to these Milsom West games and utilizing this old stuff again, because, you know, there's a bit of a nostalgia factor for me. And I absolutely, you know, honestly, I just love it. That's about it, guys. That's just a breakdown of the event, along with the kit that I brought out there. If you like this video, consider dropping a like and subscribing. You can also follow me on Instagram at Blue Jean Operator, or go to my website, thebluegeneoperator.com, to find some cool shirts and merch, which helps support this channel. Also, make sure to hit that notification bell, just so you can keep up to date whenever I decide to post a new video. But that's all I got for you guys, and I'll see you guys next time.